Hello and welcome to Which is Greater round two. It's much like normal Which is Greater, but we're comparing two previous winners. Azul, which out-tiled Dragon Castle, and Sagrada, which out-rolled Roleplayer. Now, because we've looked at these games before in previous videos, we're not going to go into a full description of the rules. Please do watch our other videos to understand how these games play. I don't think it's very fair. Azul has had more time to rest between rounds. What? In Azul, you draft tiles to add to your board in just the right combination. In Sagrada, you draft dice to add to your board in just the right combination. First off, the drafting in Azul is way more interesting because each set of tiles you take mixes up the central pool, which makes for, potentially, large sets for extra efficient play. Yeah, I mean, Sagrada's just classic take a die, place a die, but at least it's simpler. Hey, Azul's hardly more complicated. Until you get to the, oh, I've got to fill out my row and then move one over, but not uh, others. Okay, 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 yes. Technically, Azul is more complicated, but that's like saying, you know, chocolate ice cream is more unhealthy than vanilla ice cream. It doesn't matter, because it's chocolate ice cream, which is delicious. I like vanilla. Of course you do. The point is that everybody picks up Azul and then you're off. It's, we're going to have to find a different point of comparison. Okay, let's look at what you're filling in. Sagrada's stained glass window is a puzzle that builds in intensity and complexity smoothly throughout the game. You start off thinking you can build pretty much anywhere with anything, but quickly the requirement to place different colours and numbers next to each other forces you to plan carefully and the risk of not being able to place at all grows and grows. Is that not the same as Azul? As tiles fill up your wall, you can't place the same type in that row, steadily constricting your options until the market draft becomes nightmarishly tense. I guess the difference is that the constriction in Azul feels inevitable and the same no matter what you do. Um, the tiles are all equivalent after all. Whereas in Sagrada, there's this sense that the degree of tension and constriction is in so many ways your own fault. Those difficult points are because you chose to put the dice around it the way you did. And that's always an amusing feeling. But Azul has that in the intermediate step though. So the tiles you place in your holding area constrain you each round, while the wall builds a constraint that increases over the course of the game. So Azul has loads more intermediate peaks of tension. Yeah, that is pretty good. But what I like about Sagrada is that you end up with this complete window at the end of the game. Unless you screw up. Unless you screw up, yeah, and the wind gets in, or whatever. But Azul always leaves you with something incomplete. I mean, I feel good for avoiding smashed tiles and stuff, but what you're left with at the end of Azul isn't nearly as satisfying as maximizing your scoring potential in Sagrada. Even if all that comes down to luckily drafting high-value dice in the right color? Hmm, yeah, no, I'm not sure that's fair. Personal objectives are important, but enough dice are being rolled that luck is a matter of perspective. Speaking of perspective, we should uh, pick a winner. Do we have to, though? This is a whole new show. We could do whatever we want. No, Matt. Have you forgotten our mantra? We must always choose. <sighs> well, ultimately, I think Sagrada is much more satisfying from a building a thing perspective. Oh, but Azul is so much more interactive, particularly in the intentionally mean kind of way. But I do like both approaches, particularly when they're executed well. Hmm. Having to remix Azul's tiles is moderately annoying. We should pick Sagrada. Oh, Sagrada's dice are tiny. We should pick Azul. What is it with you and size? Nothing. You say Azul is more interactive, but I find myself constantly laughing at the groans and complaints of people playing Sagrada, and I just don't see that to such an extent in Azul. Azul is quieter. Yes, it's tense when you get to the end of a round, but Sagrada's tense all the way through, because you're constantly looking for certain dice to fulfill the requirements of your board. You can't be as punishing as in Azul, though. Not in terms of pure points but it still feels like the draft is hugely important, and ultimately that's what matters. Mm, yeah, we have always spent more time laughing at each other in games of Sagrada. 
Exactly. And you get that without having to be intentionally mean. Not that I mind being intentionally mean, of course. No, I know you don't. It's obvious from all the things you've put me through on this channel. Whoa! <laughs> Ah, you fork. You should see the stuff I leave out. So, Sagrada wins a second Golden Grater then. It does. Crazy. So we're gonna do a massive knockout where we look at all the games ever and reach a which is greater final where we identify the best game of all time. Yes. According to Board Game Geek, there's probably 10,000 entrants. So at a rate of like 10 episodes a year. If you're lucky. That's, mm, what, about 500 years to finish the first round and then we can get on with the later rounds in earnest. And you don't want to miss that. So subscribe today and click the bell icon to never miss an episode. Exactly. And let us know whether you like this kind of round two format. We'll see you next time. Bye.